My name is Paulina Jaramillo. I'm an assistant research professor in the Department of Engineering and Public Policy, and I have been working for the last couple of years on issues related to the integration of large-scale wind in the U.S. I will talk today about hurricane risk to offshore wind farms in the U.S. Um, so the title of my presentation is Will Hurricanes Plover Offshore Wind? Uh, the U.S. is a good offshore wind resource and there are plans to start developing this resource if we want to get to high penetration of wind resources. Uh, the uh, wind resource is located all over throughout the United States, although the most accessible offshore wind resources are in the Atlantic coast and the Gulf of Mexico. Um, as you know, we get hurricanes in the Atlantic coast and the Gulf of Mexico, and wind turbines are vulnerable to hurricanes. The pictures here show um, wind turbines in Japan that were buckled uh, for, as a result of a typhoon in 2003. And you can see that the, the damage was severe to these turbines and they were offline until they were replaced. Turbines are designed for European conditions where there are no hurricanes and they have their design speeds are equivalent to a category 2 hurricane. So what you can see in this graph is a cumulative distribution function of the number of turbines in a 50, wind farm, 50 turbine wind farm being destroyed at different wind speeds. And the numbers in the upper level of the chart show you the hurricane category. Um, so you can see that after category three, you can expect the turbines to be damaged. Um, we developed a model to estimate um, destruction buckling of wind, wind turbine towers in several locations in the United States, but I'm going to present specifically for the, uh, the case of Galveston, Texas. This is a 50 turbine wind farm, and what I show here is the cumulative distribution of the number of to towers that buckle in this wind farm in a 20-year period. What you see highlighted in the, with the red lines is, is an explanation of what the graph is showing, and I've pointed out to a point where of five turbines being buckled, the probability of five turbines be, or more being buckled um, during the 20 year, 20 year period. So as I said there, um, there's a 4% probability that more than five turbines are destroyed during this 20 year period. Um, so that also means there's a 96% probability that less than five turbines buckle in this 20 year period. The same example, but with a higher number, you have a probability of only 1% of losing more than 25 or half of your turbines in this 20 year period. The other case we looked at was uh, looking at regional development. So we looked at a case where we installed 86 gigawatts of capacity on offshore Texas. Um, so what I'm showing in this graph is the cumulative distribution function of losing a certain amount of, cap of capacity over a return period, over a period of 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, or 25, or 30 years. So the point I highlighted in the graph, that's the 30-year uh, curve. So what we're showing there is that in that specifically, specific point I highlighted is that there is a 64% probability of losing at, um, at least 7.5 gigawatts of your 86 uh, gigawatts of install capacity. That also means that you have a 40% probability of losing more than 7.5 gigawatts. This is during a 30 year period. As the number of years in your period um, decreases, there's a, there's a lower probability of losing too, too much capacity because um, this is dependent on hurricane intensity and hurricane um, occurrence rates. So you can see that in two years, there's a 90, there's only a 1% probability of losing maybe more than two gigawatts of these 86 gigawatts. Um, so it depends, your return periods are really what depend your risk and the return periods of interest vary depending on what 
what perspective you're taking, if you're an insurance company or if you're the power grid or the investor. Um, the conclusions of this project, very generally speaking, is that we don't find that grid reliability is, uh, is a significant concern related to installing high um, capacity of wind offshore. The wind, uh, um, the grid has the abilities to plan for these losses, especially since hurricanes can be predicted. Now the economic damages could be severe if you're, if you're losing, um, if you have 86 gigawatts of wind and you're losing a percentage of that, that's equivalent to millions of dollars of losses. So this might be a concern for investors and insurance companies. Now, there are mechanisms that can be used to reduce the risk to offshore wind turbines. Like I mentioned before, the turbines that we currently have were designed for European conditions. So we could design them for Atlantic or hurricane prone regions. Uh, we could, for example, produce, have backup power in the, in the wind farm so that the, when the wind is not producing power, you still have access to power so that the turbines can yaw and follow the wind. And I have a graph here that shows you how the probability for the wind farm in Galveston that we explored before decreases significantly when the turbines can yaw. So the blue line is the, the graph that I had we had shown previously where this is the risk of losing uh, a certain number of turbines in a 20-year period, and the red dotted line is what happens to that risk when the turbine can go, and you can see that it's much higher, which means the probability was, um, is lower, of damage, of losing too many turbines is lower. Um, you can also design stronger blades and stronger towels. These would require more material in the wind turbines themselves, so more steel and carbon fiber, which would likely increase the price of the, or the cost of the wind turbine. So there's a trade-off between designing stronger wind turbines for offshore and the cost. Finally, um, we can choose sites that are less prone to hurricanes. And this figure here shows you the wind resource, the most accessible wind resource in the different states in the eastern, um, in the eastern coast, and the rate of hurricane occurrence that has occurred since records have begun. So in the upper, upper corner where Texas and Louisiana and North Carolina are, those are states that have significant wind resources but also have the highest risk of having hurricanes hit the turbines. Um, the other states have a more, more moderate uh, wind resource, but they have lower probability of, of having a hurricane hit the state. So um, what we suggest is that if we want to develop offshore wind, wind we can start developing in sites where the risk of hurricanes is lower. Um, and that's the end of my, uh, my presentation. If you have any questions about this research, you can email me at paulina at cmu.edu.